kind of software process. In this lecture video, we are going to talk about the second kind of software process generic model, the incremental model. Incremental development is based on the idea of developing an initial implementation, exposing this implementation, the initial one, to the user for comment, for feedback, and then evolving this initial implementation through several versions until an adequate system has been developed. Specification, de development, and validation activities are interleaved rather than separate with feedback across activities. This is what you can see in the diagram on the slide. You can see there are specification activities, development activities, and validation activities happening with immediate feedback from and to each other. The first outcome is the initial version. You give this initial version to the customer for use. And then, based on the customer's feedback, you can see the feedback comes as given back here. And then these activities continue again to develop a new iteration. In this way, the initial version goes through mul multiple intermediate versions until you get a final version with which the customer is satisfied and there is no, again, feedback for improvement. Incremental software development is better than the waterfall approach for most businesses. E-commerce, personal systems, and so on rely on incremental development. Incremental development reflects the way that we solve problems in real life. In real life, if we look at it, we rarely work out a complete problem solution in advance, but move towards a solution in a series of steps, backtracking whenever we realize that we have made a mistake. By developing the software incrementally, it is cheaper and easier to make changes in the software as and when it is being developed. Each increment or version as shown in the diagram in this slide incorporates some of the functionality that is needed by the customer. Generally, the initial version or the early versions or increments of the system include the most important or the most urgent required functionality. This means that the customer can evaluate the system at a relatively early stage in the development to see if the system actually delivers as the customer needs it to. If not, then only the current increment or current version has to be changed and possibly new functionality or changed features can be defined for later increments. Incremental development has important benefits compared to the waterfall model. First, the cost of accommodating changing customer requirements is reduced. The amount of analysis and documentation that has to be redone is much less than is required with the waterfall model, which has absolutely no customer feedback and scope for change. It is easier to get customer feedback on the development work that has been done. Customers can comment on demonstrations of the software and see how much has been implemented from time to time. Customers find it difficult to judge progress from mere software design documents. But in this case, customer has a partially working system or the required increment given to him to work with. More rapid delivery and deployment of useful software to the customer is possible. Even if all of the functionality has not been included, every particular increment delivers some valuable or essential requirement of the entire system. Customers are now able to use and gain value from the software earlier than impossible with the waterfall process where they had to wait till the final product was ready. Customers can now use the early increments as prototypes 
and gain experience that informs their requirements for later system increments. Unlike prototypes, these are part of the real system, so there is no relearning when the complete system is available. Customers do not have to wait until the entire system is delivered before they can gain value from it. The first increment satisfies the most critical requirements so they can use the software immediately. As the highest priority services are delivered first and increments then integrated, the most important system services receive the most testing. This means that the customers are less likely to encounter software failures in the most important parts of the system. The process maintains the benefits of incremental development in that it should be relatively easy to incorporate changes into the system. Incremental development is in some form the most common approach for development of application systems. This approach can be either used with plan-driven or agile systems or with a mixture of both these approaches. In a plan-driven system, the system increments are identified in advance because a plan-driven system follows a concrete plan. Whatever is delivered is validated against the plan put in place. If an agile approach is adopted, the early increments are identified, but the development of later increments depends on progress and customer feedback and priorities. From a management point of view, the incremental development has a few problems. First, the process is not visible. Managers need regular deliverables to measure progress. If systems are developed quickly, it is not cost effective to produce documents that reflect every version of the system, as in the case of waterfall model. System structure tends to degrade as and when many new increments and features are added. Unless time and money is well spent on refactoring to improve the software, regular change and amendments to the system tend to corrupt the system structure. Thus, incorporating further software changes becomes increasingly difficult and costly. The problems with incremental development becomes particularly acute for large, complex, long lifetime systems where different teams develop different parts of the system. Large systems usually need a stable framework or architecture with the responsibilities of different teams and personnel working on parts of the system need to be clearly defined with respect to these detailed architectures. This has to be planned in advance rather than developed incrementally. Most systems require a basic facility set that is used by different parts of the system. As requirements here are not defined in detail, until an increment is to be implemented, it can be hard to identify these common facilities that are needed by all increments. Iterative development can also be difficult when a replacement system is being developed. Users want all of the functionality of the old system and are often unwilling to experiment with an incomplete new system. Therefore, getting useful customer feedback becomes difficult. The last of the problems. The essence of iterative processes is that the specification is developed in conjunction with the software. However, this conflicts with the procurement model of many organizations, where the complete system specification is part of the system development contract. In the incremental approach, there is no complete system specification until the final increment is implemented and delivered. 
This requires a new form of contract, which large customers, such as government agencies, find it difficult to accommodate. So in this lecture video, we have seen the architecture for incremental development. We have weighted the advantages as well as the disadvantages and the important principal attributes of incremental development and compared it against the waterfall model. Both of these generic models are equally important and valuable as long as you make the right choice of the model depending on the type of application software or any other software system you are going to develop. Thank you.